The Oracle Network. The Oracle Network. Look deeper. We have an active shooter. We have an active shooter inside the warehouse. Welcome to Active Shooter, a podcast that covers the whys, the hows, and the aftermath of active shooter and mass casualty events. They have an active shooter in the building, a second call says they uh, are being attacked. I'm in shock. 1692 means we got shots fired at 415 at the Route 291, sounded like an automatic firearm. Active shooter, reports of an active shooter, active shooter, active shooter of mass casualty incidents. Thank you for listening. You are listening to Active Shooter, a podcast that may contain adult themes, explicit language, and graphic depictions of violence. Portions of this show may be traumatic for those under 18. Listener discretion is advised. School is one of those places where we expect to be safe. Unfortunately, they have gained a reputation for being a favorite location among mass shooters. Still, the trend seems isolated to elementary and high schools. So on the cold, windy morning of April 16, 2007, nobody on the campus of Virginia Tech thought that the day would be interrupted by gunfire. No one realized yet that this was the day 32 innocent people would be slaughtered, with another 23 injured. Nobody except a 23-year-old student who started and ended the day in unspeakable violence. Active Shooter the Podcast is a High Five Holly production, and I'm your host, JT. If you've listened to our prior episodes, you know that the Active Shooter podcast team has taken the No Notoriety Pledge, and we will not be sharing the real name of the shooters that we cover. We will be giving the shooters a pseudonym and refer to them by that name throughout the episode. This will help in clearing up any confusion in the story, while remaining true to our pledge in not naming the shooter by their actual name. We will refer to today's shooter as Daniel. They seem to think there was a lone gunman who, while we had been earlier told was in custody, is now reported dead. And I have some new information about the injuries. We know that at least 20 people were killed. We are now being told by Carillion's spokesperson that four patients are at the New River Valley uh, Medical Center. Three of those are in stable condition and one is in critical condition, all with gunshot wounds. Uh, And then three additional Three additional uh, patients have been brought to Roanoke Memorial Hospital. Uh, News 7's Rachel DePompa, though, we are told, has some additional information. Rachel. Well, Jean, we are now hearing 22 dead, uh, including the gunman. That word just came out. That is including the one person over at Ambler Johnson, at least at least 20. It's still the ballpark figure um, over at uh, Norris Hall, which is an engineering building, um, classrooms in that area. But we are hearing 22 dead, including the gunman at this time. And that press conference you guys just saw out there, they want to let people know that they are notified next to Ken. They're going to release information as it becomes available available from here in the spot, the Holtzman Conference Center on the Virginia Tech campus. But uh, things are still coming in. They, but they do say, and I want to reiterate, they say the campus is secure right now. At 5 a.m. in Suite 2121 in Harper Hall, Daniel was found by one of his roommates to be awake and at his computer. 30 minutes later, another roommate saw him brushing his teeth, dressing, and, once ready, walking out the door. At 6.04 a.m., Daniel was seen in the mailbox foyer of West Ambler Johnston Hall, also called W.A.J. Hall. The residence hall and dorms inside were secured by key cards and only accessible to students who lived inside. Students like Emily Hilscher, 
who was dropped off at 7.02 a.m. by her boyfriend. Emily made her way inside W.A.J. and to her dorm, number 4040. At 7.15 a.m., Daniel entered dorm 4040 and shot Emily. Upon hearing the sound of gunfire, R.A. Ryan Hall went to the dorm to investigate. The moment he entered, he was fired upon. Daniel then left, leaving bloody footprints and shell casings behind. How he got into W.A.J., let alone Emily's dorm, is still unknown. At 7.20 a.m., the Virginia Tech Police Department received a call reporting a noise like someone falling out of their loft bed in dorm 4040. Another call soon followed with a similar report. Upon their arrival at 7.24 a.m., they found Emily and Ryan and the scene of a shooting. At 7.30 a.m., W.A.J. Hall officially went on lockdown. Despite the horrors being discovered at W.A.J. Hall, the rest of the campus proceeded as usual with classes beginning at 8 a.m. After the bloody start to his day, Daniel went about more mundane tasks. He exited the building and at 7.17 a.m. arrived back in his room at Harper Hall. Upon returning to his dorm, Daniel changed his clothes and proceeded to cancel his computer account. In doing so, he deleted all files from his campus email and his email account itself. Daniel then left, with the package in hand, and made his way to the post office. He arrived at 9.01 a.m. and mailed the box to the NBC News office located in New York City, New York. The package included pictures of Daniel holding weapons and a written diatribe, nearly 1,800 words in all. There were also video clips depicting Daniel expressing resentment, rage, and the urge to get even. The photo showed him holding guns and other weapons that included a hammer and knife. And more eerily, he was holding the knife, pointing it towards the camera in one photo, and at his head in another. The video clip portrayed Daniel saying things like the quotes, You had a hundred billion chances, and ways to have avoided today. And, this is it. This is where it all ends. End of the road. What a life it was. Some life. You have vandalized my heart, raped my soul, and torched my conscience. You thought it was one pathetic void life you were extinguishing. Thanks to you, I die, like Jesus Christ, to inspire generations of the weak and the defenseless people. Do you know what it feels like to be spit on your face and have trash shoved down your throat? Do you know what it feels like to dig your own grave? Do you know what it feels like to have your throat slashed from ear to ear? Do you know what it feels like to be torched alive? You've had everything you wanted. Your Mercedes wasn't enough, you brats. Your golden necklaces weren't enough, you snobs. Your trust fund wasn't enough. Your vodka and cognac weren't enough. All your debaucheries weren't enough. Daniel also mailed a letter to the English department at the school verbally attacking an English professor. With his errands complete between 9.15 and 9.30 a.m., Daniel walked to Norris Hall, an engineering business building located on the campus. He was beginning a new phase of his plan as he began chaining the entrance door shut from the inside. Approximately between 9.40 and 9.51 p.m., Daniel started shooting inside room 206 in the Norris Hall. Approximately between 9.40 and 9.51 p.m., Daniel started shooting inside room 206 in Norris Hall, where a graduate advanced hydrology engineering class had just commenced. Daniel shot and killed Professor G. V. Loganathan. He continued his onslaught, hitting 12 out of 13 students in the room. Nine of those students were killed, and three others were injured. Only one student managed to escape with their life physically intact. The emotional and psychological wounds would last a lifetime. It was a snowy Monday. Our class was about 9 o'clock, 9.30, and so I remember waking up and seeing the flurries outside, so I started thinking, okay, time to get dressed, get to class, and a friend of mine picked me up and took us in, and we were already late, of course. People are just kind of talking about the weekend and plans. Teacher hands us a worksheet. 
After about 20 minutes, you started hearing loud bangs and loud pops. At first, you didn't really think much of it. It's like, okay, this is kind of strange. And then it got closer and closer and faster and faster. Our professor kind of peeped out. She's a very calm woman, but her face kind of got this alarmed look. She closed the door, said, call 911. Two other students jumped up with her and barricaded the door. This whole time, you're in complete shock. And I remember thinking, like, what's going on? This can't be real. We all dropped to the floor and got the quickest protection that we could find. That's when he came in and he pushed right through a couple of desks, pushed him out of the way. And I remember I was under the desk, hunched under it, and I looked to the left. And at this point, I'm still thinking that this is some kind of drill, maybe. And yeah, he started shooting and went straight down the aisles. Very planned, very deliberate, very determined. No emotion at all. Leaving room 206 and entering room 207, which was the elementary level German class, teacher Christopher Bishop was shot. Daniel shot at several students located at the front of the classroom and slowly began to walk up and down the aisle, shooting towards other students as he exited, walking towards room 205 right afterward. Students in room 205 heard the shots and barricaded the door. Undeterred, Daniel simply shot through the door in an attempt to strike anyone he could. Every so often when he would fire it, they'd be accompanied by a yelp or a scream. I remember a bullet hit the wall two inches above my head. Down the hall, in room 211, a French class was being taught where again, the shots were heard by students who tried placing a desk in front of the door. Another student managed to make a call to 911 as Daniel was pushing his way into the classroom. Again, Daniel stalked up and down the aisleway, shooting innocent students. Some students had the foresight to play dead as Daniel roamed the room, looking for more victims to kill brutally. This would prove to be life-saving, indeed, for several students. The first 911 call about shots fired was placed at about 9.42 a.m. It was reported at the Norris Hall. By 9.45 a.m., a mere three minutes after the first 911 call, the first officers arrived on the scene, only to find the doors chained shut. Officers tried to shoot open the chain's lock, or even the chain, but they were unsuccessful. Once I sort of came out of that uh, initial shock, I dove underneath my desk, and somewhere in that maybe three to four seconds, uh, he had shot me, uh, just once in my arm. In the meantime, Daniel returned to room 207. He had more destruction to commit. Students in the room tried to hold the door closed, using hands, feet, and whatever they thought could help this door remain their only shield from the horror on the other side. Daniel tried to fire a circle of sorts around the door handle, trying to break through the door. He finally gave up and left for another classroom, walking into the French class in room 211. Again, Daniel paced up and down the aisleways of the class, shooting students in a random yet precise manner. After completing the murderous mission, Daniel walked out and attempted to enter room 204, which contained a mechanics class full of terrified students. Professor Levieu Labrescu tried to hold the door closed, using his body as a shield of sorts. Some students from the mechanics class managed to escape the room by jumping out the window. Daniel didn't care. He just kept on shooting through the door, hitting Professor Labrescu along with two students. Walking back to room 206, Daniel proceeded to shoot at more students. Students who started their days innocently believing it may be a wonderful day. He didn't speak at all. He was completely silent the whole time. I didn't even think he looked of age to be in college. I was surprised he ended up being 23. At 